Welcome to Yankee Chronicle. I'm your host, Abby Peel, and our show today is presented by the Refinery Restaurant and Market in Andover, where the reviews tell you everything you need to know. Had a terrific dinner tonight with my kids and friends. Everyone was pretty hungry, so it was hard not to immediately notice the incredible aroma of BBQ-style food upon entering. I've visited a few times in the past few months and find the food to be consistently delicious. Today, we'll be back here at the Refinery Restaurant and Market in Andover for another behind the scenes look at their culinary creation process. Kathy Lowe and her gang will preview this year's site event. Hannah Flanders of the Kearsarge Food Hub revisits a family friendly event celebrating food, farms, and community. And we'll close with an interview I did with Larry Ballin at Musterfield Farm. But first, a few words from our stable of good businesses that make your Yankee Chronicle possible. Please stay with us. We are strong and we'll get through this together, but these are stressful times. Reach out to someone, connect with your friends, and know that you are not alone. Visit wearebroadcasters.com slash hope. Furnished by the National Association of Broadcasters and this station. This program is supported by Echo Communications, a digitally integrated commercial printer and mailer located in New London, New Hampshire since 1997 with roots going back much further as the country press, AccuMail, and the home of the Kearsarge shopper, Echo Communications. Welcome back to Yankee Chronicle. I'm your host, Abby Peel, coming to you from the Refinery Restaurant and Market here in Andover. And I'm now joined by a guy who needs no introduction at all because if you've been here, he'll come and say hi to you. Hi, uh, Barbecue Master AJ, how are you? Oh, well, that's quite the introduction. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, getting the notoriety for smelling like smoke is, uh, I never thought I'd ever do yeah, that. Yeah, people right? must be around town and be like, oh, I think AJ's around. I can smell barbecue and smoke. Absolutely. You know, I wear the shirt uh, in town that says real men smell like barbecue and then everybody laughs. They love that. That's well, amazing. So. Oh my gosh, that's incredible. Yeah. How are things going here at the, refi at the refinery? I mean, it's been three years of business, which is just incredible that you've been here. It feels like you guys have always been here. Uh, and I know you've been very busy. We're extremely busy. Uh, actually humbled. And I didn't realize that it was going to take off like this and hmm. you know Brian uh, definitely had a clear vision of where we were headed and he goes are you sure you're ready for this but to your point three years wow two years best in New Hampshire so it took us one year to get on the map even with COVID going on and uh, as you said I think having us here every day and working the floor uh, if you will it's just part of who we are Absolutely. and what we want to do and, and the hours um, really fly by yeah and uh, to that point, I mean, it takes a long time sure. to hone in the barbecue craft. Sure. Um, so that's what we're doing. We're just doing it and doing it right. Really incredible. And I think you are in such a location that really brings year round visitors because you are right off a snowmobile trail, yeah. you're right off of a big route for motorcycles, you yeah. have schools, you're easy accessible. Yeah. So that must bring a lot of new faces in, plus a lot of locals as well. Yeah, uh, I love the local piece because our vision was to have that that place that people wanted to go yeah. and either get rid of their problems or solve some problems <laughs> and we've turned into that you know the local community police fire everybody's been reaching out you know they could use the back room we have a lot of weddings we have a lot of people's you know birthday events yeah. and the things that define their life right and we're part of that and that's awesome that's really what we set out to do because that's hospitality right and what we believe in to a T and food quality being number one that's also driving people from a huge geographical area. definitely quickly talk about this market too because it's something that you can certainly come in and sit down for a meal but you can get a lot of things grab and go uh, as well and this is open for people to, to access absolutely so we had a vision um, when you talk about Southern hospitality, and of course Brian being from Mississippi, but I'm doing the barbecue, yeah. we always like to joke about that. But there's a lot of places that we went where we saw a business model that we wanted to bring here to keep people fired up about that food quality. Sure. So our steak uh, that we get our primal cuts in, we break them down ourselves, our seafood, our salads, everything, people don't always want to dine in. 
but they want the ability to grab and go type thing. Right. So this was kind of like a test. Yeah. Is it going to work in this market? Because we know it works in other places sure. in the country. And we happened to visit this place called Chef's Market down in Nashville, of all places. And cool. we saw the beefed up version of what we dreamed of. Yeah. And so we took it and brought it down to what we think people would want. And, and we're going to do it here. So. Amazing. And how cool, too, that you can have your main course, but then maybe you don't want to handle pasta salads. Come on in and grab some salads from you. Good to go. And take them home and enjoy with your meal. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I actually see the market piece growing in time. Yeah. Um, we cool. have a plan for this place. Uh, if you know Brian at all, he's a <laughs> foot on the gas yeah, type yeah. person <laughs> yeah. um i could you know i count the the nights and hours that we sleep and we talk about and dream about what's next and cool i mean it's even going as far as what's our what's the location what's the right. next thing right. in the restaurant yeah world. what do you so, add yeah i know covid slowed us down a little bit but yeah. we're gonna we're gonna keep rolling with i that, love so it yeah. before i let you go talk about your love of barbecue where it started how how you became the master sure yeah <laughs> i don't know about master pit master right? yeah. yeah so uh, i got to give some uh some street cred to dinosaur barbecue is okay. there and people have heard this story probably a hundred times but I, whenever i traveled in my previous occupation i always went to the fine steak houses and barbecue joints all over the country cool. but dinosaur barbecue was one of those places that really showed me what quality food was like and i had got a cookbook for christmas and <laughs> uh, i have an engineering type background so i started building uh, smokers designing smokers and cooking barbecue and i realized this could be a thing. Uh, starting the catering business with Brothers House of Smoke. Right. And then uh, we do it authentically where you're using, you know, a mixture of charcoal, lump charcoal, hickory. Yep. Um, we're cooking brisket for in excess of 20 hours. Yes. And, you know, I'm very proud of what that has turned into because I love giving lessons to people to show them how it's done, but also, uh, you know, we're in excess of 20,000 pounds of brisket a year, yeah. in excess of 15,000 pounds of pork and oh chicken a year. Oh my goodness. So it's crazy, and that's only a small component of sure. our market. So, um, yeah, doing things authentically, learning how to make rubs, and uh, Chef Jason DiGeronimo is just incredible as well, and he's yes. challenging me with different flavor profiles. and. It's just amazing. The amazing. amount of food is amazing. Well, and you can tell there's such passion here, and it really just bleeds through not only the food, but the atmosphere and the people. And it's just so fun to not only come and visit you, but eat here as well. And I can say that firsthand. So, <laughs> well, we appreciate it so much. AJ, thank you so much for uh, hosting us. We love coming here and talking to you and giving us the lowdown. You're always welcome. Thank you. Thank you. What a delight. When we return, Kathy Lowe will give us a rundown of this year's Sutton events. But first, these words from some of the other good folks that make your Yankee Chronicle possible. COVID-19 vaccines are safe and effective at protecting you from COVID-19, especially severe illness and death. Vaccinated people are far less likely to be hospitalized or die because of COVID-19, including the Delta variant. COVID-19 has a much harder time spreading in a vaccinated population. When more people are vaccinated, we are all better protected against COVID-19. Even if you're young and healthy, it's still important to get vaccinated. Vaccines can help end this pandemic. To get the most protection, make sure you get all recommended doses of a COVID-19 vaccine. Getting vaccinated helps protect you and others from COVID-19. This program is supported by HR Clough and Kearsarge Heating. Their full service model offers oil delivery, propane, motor fuels with design, installation, service, and maintenance of all types of oil, gas, and alternative energy systems, as well as air conditioning, water conditioning systems, and backup generators. Their highly trained and friendly staff will assist you throughout the process of buying, installing, and servicing a full line of energy products. H.R. Clough and Kearsarge Heating. Right Welcome back to your Yankee Chronicle. I'm your host, Abby Peel. Next up is Sutton's events. Let's hear about it from Kathy Lowe and her gang. Hi, Kathy. Hi, thank you, Abby. 
So uh, I'm here with my friends Dorothy Jeffrey and Jody Wells, and uh, we wanted to talk about the um, variety show coming up on July 24th. It's a Sunday from 4 to 6. Now this is a community celebration. It's free for everybody to come. Um, we're going to have, oh, 15 to 20 local acts from surrounding towns, music, uh, storytelling, poetry, and whatnot. And we just want to celebrate this incredible meeting house and let people know that it's, it's available for other kinds of things like this. Uh, I grew up in South Sutton here, and I used to break into the back window over by the organ. Should and be telling people this, Kathy? Well, you know, <laughs> I don't think the Sutton police watch this show very much, so anyway. Uh, but uh, the, the, the whole sound in there is so beautiful. So uh, my sisters and I and friends, we used to go in the back window and just start singing and uh, bring our guitars in. And uh, I always had the dream that we would do some kind of a musical review that involved uh, many community members. So that's what we're excited about sharing with you. This uh, variety show has been Kathy's brainchild, but it was part of our plan to use this meeting house space more. We've been working very hard over the last three years to renovate the meeting house. We've had so much help from the community in terms of contributions that have helped us raise the funds to do this. We're not quite done with the renovation, but we're at a point where we're able to celebrate where we're at and use the facility. <laughs> to use the space more. Um, and so the perfect spot for a variety show with the community and showing off the, new, the newly renovated meeting house. Our next project is the renovation of the schoolhouse that is right behind us. And we've started um, fundraising for that activity. And we've put in application for a few grants, cross your fingers, so that in 2023, we will be fully renovating the historic District 9 schoolhouse that lies right behind the meeting house. Okay, so now we got Jody Wells over here. He and I grew up together in South Sutton, and our, our fathers were uh, buddies on the stage, a lot of song and dance and slapstick, right? Remember right. that? Yeah, Remember yeah. that? Yeah, and plus you have a grandfather who was in this Wells Orchestra, so tell us That's think, right. something and I about I did that. not sneak in the back window <laughs> of the meeting house. I want to make that clear. Um, but yeah, uh, one th interesting thing is that my great-grandfather uh, had the first general store in South Sutton, which is right down there, the Red Building. And so he had that for many years. And my grandfather, who had the orchestra, Wells Orchestra, he went to this little red schoolhouse behind us and one through eighth grade, and then he had a chance to go to New London, to high school, and uh, my great-grandfather said to him, you have a choice, you can go to high school or you can take the train from Bradford into Concord for music lessons. And so he chose that instead, and so that's how he became a musician and had his own orchestra. And what they did, uh, really was in the uh, 1920s and 30s. They, uh, they went around to the different uh, lakes in the area, uh, into ballrooms and, and town halls, like there's a poster there of the uh, Whipple Memorial Hall in New London, where they had a uh, pajama party fancy dance, and the lady who had the fanciest pajamas got a beautiful uh, silver cup for her participation. <laughs> so, so anyway, they had a lot of fun back then, and, and they did a lot of dancing. Um, I wanted to mention, too, that uh, my family moved here from New York City, and in the late 40s, um, they were retiring from vaudeville and circus worlds. So they kind of turned this whole town upside down and uh, put on shows. My uncle Tom Lowe, he wrote 13 original musical comedies, and Jody was in a lot of those with us growing up here. And uh, the last time we did something in relation to that body of work was 1993 here, where we did a big song review of my uncle's songs, uh, Tom Lowe review songs to- um, Here in the Meeting House. Here in the Meeting House, yeah, to raise money for the um, scholarship that we still ongoingly give to a high school graduate from Kearsage Regional High School who's going into the arts. 
So again, please come and join us on July 24th, Sunday from 4 to 6, rain or shine, and it's free for everybody to come and celebrate this beautiful meeting house with us. Uh, lots of local people from surrounding towns are going to come up and do one act. It's going to be fun and silly and musical and um, just let's let's do it. Let's <laughs> let's join together. <laughs> Thanks, Kathy. Mark your calendar for another great community celebration. When we return, Hannah Flanders of the Kearsarge Food Hub will join us to explain their mission and show us how they bring that mission to life with events celebrating food, farms, and community. Please stay with us. We'll be right back. We all want our kids to grow up safe and healthy, so we show them how, and we tell them with honest conversations that let them know what we expect. That's especially important when it comes to alcohol and other drugs. Kids need to know the dangers and how to avoid them. And when it comes to pain medications, opioids, they need to know that they should never be taken without a prescription and never shared with friends or family. It's dangerous and illegal, so talk with your kids, because when you talk, they hear you. This program is supported by The Intertown Record, your weekly hometown community newspaper covering the Kearsarge Sunapee Sunshine region of New Hampshire. The Intertown Record. Welcome back to your Yankee Chronicle. I'm Abby Peel. Let's now join Hannah Flanders with the Kearsarge Food Hub. Hi, Hannah. Thank you so much, Abby. Yes, we had a wonderful community fair here at 11 West Main Street, home of Sweet Beat, on July 2nd. It's kind of a tradition here at the Sweet Beat to host a gathering around July 4th because we actually opened Sweet Beat Farm Stand on July 4th in 2015. So it's our birthday, it's a wonderful time to gather, the fresh produce is rolling in. So we had a gathering to celebrate all the fresh produce, all the wonderful community relationships that we've been building over the past seven years or so. And we had a taco station set up um, with all the freshest ingredients handcrafted. Uh, we had live music by Decatur Creek, friends of ours, they did a wonderful job. We had activity stations all around the lawn here for kids especially to get their hands dirty, plant some seeds, make some seed blobs so they could go throw in seeds wherever they wanted to. Uh, and it was all part of a scavenger hunt for them. So they went around, they did these little activities. They took home seedlings and things that they were making. And then they entered to win some prizes for kids. And they loved it. The kids absolutely loved it. It was a joy to see them running around, having a great time. We had a fairyland set up in our little circle of hemlocks, which was a really beautiful space for kids to just get creative with stuff from nature and building little fairy houses and that was organized by our friends from Evergreen here at 11 West Main Street so it was an absolutely beautiful experience and it felt so good to be with the community. It was also such a joy to connect with some of our partners that we're doing uh, certain programs with in the community. One specific program is the Abenaki Seeds Project. Uh, this is a project that we're working on with the Abenaki Trails Project and the Hopkinton Historical Society and Warner Public Market. We distributed seedlings, heritage Abenaki seeds seedlings to 40 growers in our Kearsarge area and then we're going to coordinate the harvest back to the Abenaki Food Pantry and the Hopkinton Historical Society is doing a native foodways project as well with a harvest dinner coming up in October so keep your eyes open for that uh, and another wonderful partner of ours is Warner Public Market they came and they set up a table uh, with a really fun art project for the kiddos and they were promoting their workshops they have hands-on workshops for all sorts of things uh, that you can go carve spoons you can make baskets you can can do some woodblock printing so be sure to check them out they have a lot of great stuff going on we also had the Bradford Energy Committee join us for our community fair and they were here talking about plastic free July which is a global movement just to raise awareness about how to reduce plastic waste for our planet um, and they did a wonderful job making paper uh, seedling trays out of old shoppers if you can believe it so that was a really cool project if you're interested in cutting down your use of plastic come check out what we have here at Sweet Beat Market and Cafe not only are we working to integrate biodegradable plastics for our salad mix and in the cafe, but we also have products to help you cut down on plastic in the kitchen. The mission of the Kearsarge Food Hub is to reinvigorate our community within a restorative local food system. And the heartbeat of the work, as we call it, is really about building community. 
It's about meeting our neighbors and having conversations and getting to know where our food comes from, who grows it, and really building in systems and opportunities to honor the process of growing food right here in our own community and how much that can build resiliency and not only that, but, but joy when we're tasting and enjoying the fruits of our local lands, especially now in the summertime of New Hampshire. Uh, it truly brings a lot of joy. It brings a lot of connection. So the Cares Arch Food Hub is a nonprofit organization. And so this summer, we launched our first ever summer raffle as a brand new fundraiser to raise funds for things like food donations of fresh produce to local pantries and our ever expanding educational programming. We have this beautiful uh, Pedego e-bike that was donated by Village Sports and Steve and Nancy Allenby. And it's valued at $1,800. And this is uh, the first prize in our raffle. There's also two other prizes in our summer raffle, a $500 Sweet Beet gift card and a $300 Sweet Beet gift card that you can use here in the market or in the cafe uh, for whatever your heart desires. You can gift it to someone else. You can give it to your local food pantry if you want to. So we are encouraging folks to pick up summer raffle tickets by July 31st. You can get one entry for $15 five for $65 or 10 entries for $110 and you can win one of these three amazing prizes and you are supporting the mission of the Kearsarge Food Hub here in the Kearsarge Lake Sunapee region. We would love for you to keep in touch with our work here at the Kearsarge Food Hub, home of Sweet Bee. You can go to our website for all sorts of information about our dynamic programming. You can follow us on social media, Facebook and Instagram at Kearsarge Food Hub and at Sweet Beet NH. Uh, and join our newsletter list. We're really active in our email trying to let you know what's going on in the community, give you opportunities to volunteer, get involved, uh, give you the latest on our events and our community partnerships and all sorts of things. So please follow along, we'd love to see you there. What a great event working toward their mission. When we return, we'll revisit an interview I did last year at Musterfield Farm Museum, an 18th century historic homestead featuring restored farm buildings and a working farm in beautiful North Sutton, New Hampshire. Let's highlight another community-minded business that supports your Yankee Chronicle. We all make choices about alcohol. Kids make choices whether to drink or not. Bye, Dad. Bye-bye. Remember, I'm going to Alex's party tonight and sleeping over. Yeah, have fun. Hey, Em. Remind me about that party again. And adults make choices whether to talk about it. That's true of parents and every other trusted adult in a kid's life. Kids want to know our expectations, and they want honest answers in everyday conversations. So talk with your kids and help lead them on a positive path. Because when you talk, they hear you. This program is supported by Main Street Bookends of Warner. For books, toys, games, cards, gifts, and a gallery of local art. Main Street Bookends of Warner. Abby Peel, your host of Yankee Chronicle. Last year, I had a chance to visit Sutton's Musterfield Farm. Let's go to that interview now. Hi, Larry, thanks for having us. Hey, Abby, thanks for coming up. This is a pretty picture-perfect day to be here at Musterfield. Great colors uh, with the foliage and everything. So thanks for um, being our host location. So Larry, someone that's never been to Musterfield or heard of this, can you tell us a little bit about Musterfield's history? Musterfield Farm has a long history in the town of Sutton that I won't go into in detail, <laughs> but uh, the most recent history was the Bristol family that owned it uh, from the 40s up until they turned it into a museum in the early 1990s. And it is now a working farm museum that is supported by the Robert S. Bristol Trust. Uh, we have a historic homestead. We've got a number of very historic buildings that are open to the public and we encourage people to come up and see our museum. It's on Harvey Road in North Sutton, New Hampshire. You know, this has been a strange year, uh, you know, with the pandemic and everything. So what's that meant for Musterfield? 
Uh, the pandemic has affected us in a few ways. Uh, we weren't able to hold any events this mm. year, so we uh, ice day was canceled because of the rain in <laughs> January. Then after the pandemic started, we were unable to have our June jam, unable to have farm days, unable to have harvest day, which would have been last weekend. Uh, so that's resulted probably in a loss of about $20,000 of revenue for us. Um, it's been difficult to manage the farm stand as we normally have, so we ended up moving it to more of an outdoor market, which worked well, and people were very cooperative in the social distancing and being patient to go and pick up their uh, produce and vegetables. Um, we did have a little bit of labor issues in that um, we have college students, high school students in workforce. They had to quarantine prior to going out of state to go to school, so mm. we had to juggle our employees quite a bit. But we had a successful summer. Everything got harvested. Uh, it was a great year for growing crops. Um, our customers were, as I said, very cooperative. So all in all, we feel fortunate that we were able to be in this beautiful place and uh, continue what we do best. Definitely. So I think one of the things that I found with, with Musterfield this summer is because people didn't have so much going on in such a busy summer, people use this as kind of an escape. So did you find people were coming and kind of just enjoying it more than popping and getting something from the farm standing and headed, heading out? We noticed a lot of people lingering. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people going for walks along the road and out in the fields. Um, you know, spending a little bit more time enjoying the uh, property here. Sure. As opposed to just grabbing something and running away. Yeah. And so it's been nice. Unfortunately, we didn't give any tours of the homestead this year. We haven't really encouraged people to be in and out of our buildings as much. But. Uh, They'll be here next year. And how do you rely on um, trying to make up that lost revenue that you had? Can people donate to Musterfield? What do, what do you ask from the public to help out? We are not aggressive in our fundraising. We have a robust membership of probably 300 families, mm. and they can donate anywhere from $10 to whatever they like. Sure. Um, but we're, we're not hustling that all the time. When people come to the farm stand, they don't feel like we're asking them for more money than what they need to pay. Sure. Uh, so we welcome donations. Uh, we do have, um, you know, with the lack of fundraising this year, we'll rely more on the trust that was set up by Robert Bristol, who founded this museum uh, 30 plus years ago. Okay. But uh, all in all, because we're pretty frugal up here, and we have a farm manager, Steve Paquin, who really knows how to manage with a tight budget, we'll be okay. Uh, if people want to donate, we'd love to have their money. Sure. And if they're interested in membership, they can go to our website, just Google Mo Musterfield.com. Great. We'll be in the woods this winter, cutting another 60 cords of wood. Yep. Um, we hopefully have a nice deep snowpack on Keyser Lake this year, so we'll have a good ice day in sure. January. Uh, we'll fill up our ice house again in hopes that we have events that we can use it at this summer or next summer. Um, and we'll just plan on uh, having another year like we did this year. Yeah. And if we can have our events, that's great. If not, then we'll have to go with the tide that, you know, the environment presents to sure. us. Sure. Larry, we really appreciate you hosting us and talking to us about Musterfield. Thanks, Larry. Just a reminder that Farm Days is coming up August 27th and 28th. This is the museum's largest event of the year, a two-day celebration of all things agricultural, historical, and farm related. Check out their website for details. Next week, we'll be hosted by New London Hospital to hear about their latest advancements and the preparation for the return of the New London Hospital Days, the first weekend in August. By the way, YCN will be carrying their parade again. Don't miss our game of the week, great saves from the past. This week, YCN will feature a 2021 Brattleboro at Hartford football game. All our games replay at 12 noon and 7 p.m. on Sundays and Mondays on NCTV 8, Roku, and Apple TV. All of our past programs and specials can be found at YCNnow.com using the search function. I'm Abby Peel. Join us next week at the same time for another edition of Yankee Chronicle presented by New London Hospital. Stay safe, everyone.